So it really makes no sense to me. And I'm like, girl, work. Either cover yourself all up or don't. Hello, my beautiful light brights. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neon Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race UK vs. The World Season 2, Episode 4, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. But don't forget to watch all the way to the end when I let you know who had my best and worst looks of the week. This week's runway theme is Gone Cruising, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a nautical look. So let's see who's going to be swimming with the fishes today. Let's get into it. First up, it's Kata Minaj. And Kata Minaj is coming out in this pirate-inspired look. She's got blue hair with a blue asymmetrical bodysuit. She's paired it with this big brown coat and one brown boot. She's got a ship's wheel on one nipple and then she's got a piercing on the other one and she's definitely giving you the gay Jack Sparrow. I am surprised that Kata Minaj went in this direction. Uh, when I heard of the theme of nautical, I definitely was going to go more in that Jean-Paul Gaultier vibes. And spoiler alert, there are some queens that are going to go there. But I love that Kata decided to go with a little bit more of this androgyny, a little bit of this character, but still making it fashion. This look is so so well thought through and it's got so many little beautiful details from the ship's wheel on her chest to all of the sort of little encrusted details around her neck as well as having just that like one leg which kind of gives you that like pirate one-legged feel and it's definitely giving you character but still making it fashion the coat is this like brown leather coat which the coat on its own is beautiful and then you mix it in with everything else it is definitely elevated. And to think that the most recent season of Drag Race Down Under had a pirate themed and this outdoes most of those looks. And that says a lot. That goes to show how much of an all-stars Miss Kata Minaj is. I love the blue and the brown. It's a nice color combination that goes really clash against each other, but with that little pop of gold really takes it to the next level. All in all, this is super well thought through, super well detailed. And I think in my opinion, one of the best looks that Kata has done on the runway this season. And that's saying a lot she's had some iconic moments all in all this is freaking fantastic i love every minute of it and it is definitely going to be a fab next up is theresa may and theresa may is coming in in this full latex attire with blue and white stripes giving you that nautical theme she's got three boobs and she's got tentacles coming all over her y'all this is a look First up, I will say that the latex was such a smart idea. It's so cool, so edgy, so different. It's not something I would expect from Miss Theresa May, but I love that she went there. I love the dress. I love the headpiece. I love her makeup. It's all giving you this really cool vibe, which we haven't seen from Theresa May. But then she decides to pair it with these inflatable tentacles. Now, I actually don't mind the idea of these tentacles because my interpretation is it's, it's this monster that's coming out of the ocean and pulling the sailor in into the depths of the earth. At least that's where my mind went. And I thought that was a cool little story. The problem I have with the tentacles themselves is that they feel very basic. Personally, I think that it's cool that they're there, but if you're gonna do these sort of tentacles, let's make sure that they don't look like they're inflatables. I wish they had a little bit more dimension into them. I think had she done these inflatables and then just painted them and maybe encrusted them with a whole bunch of like rhinestones, it would have made them feel like really elevated and give you that contrast between the beautiful latex and this inflatable material. Right now, the inflatable material just feels cheap comparative to the latex. The part that throws me off completely is the third boob. I do not know what this has to do with anything. It feels like it was just thrown in for absolutely no reason. I'm all for having a little gag, having a little moment, and a third boob definitely gives you that sort of alien-esque vibe, but this is not an alien challenge. This is a nautical challenge. Had she said she was going like underwater creature, then I could have seen 30 boobs, but she's not. She is the sailor. So it really makes no sense to me. That being said, the outfit looks pretty decent. Uh, it's not my favorite. It's not the worst. It's got moments of brilliance here and there. And that's why ultimately I'm going to have to go with a soft fat. 
Next up, it's La Grande Dame, and La Grande Dame is coming out giving you these blue and white stripes, that classic nautical look. She's definitely channeling her inner Jean-Paul Gaultier and giving you sort of that French excellence that you came to expect. I said I would have done a blue and white striped look for a nautical look, and uh, I'm glad I'm not on the season because La Grande Dame comes in and gives you the full fashion moment. She says, no, no, I'm not giving you Jean-Paul Gaultier inspired. I am wearing actual custom-made Jean-Paul Gaultier because apparently she is friends with Jean-Paul Gaultier. And I'm like, girl, work. You can see that she is a model. She loves the fashion. She's friends with freaking the best fashion designers in the world. So did we expect anything less? I mean, actually, I kind of did, and she then topped it. Like, come on, girl. This girl knows her fashion. I love that she decided to go with this look, but I, what I really also like is that she went with this red hair and this red shoe. It's that little extra pop of oomph that really needed to make it come alive on the runway. It's giving you fashion, it's giving you drag, it's giving you everything that you want it to give. Honestly, I don't really have any notes. I mean, how can I criticize Jean-Paul Gaultier? But La Grande Dame is definitely becoming the star and definitely one of the fashion queens to watch. All in all, this is amazing and definitely gonna be a fab. Next up, it's Scarlet Envy, and Scarlet Envy is coming in in this frozen in time Victorian lady that's fallen to the bottom of the ocean floor. She's got the ship's wheel in her head and her skin is just glistening and frozen from the cold water. She said that she is channeling her favorite movie, which is the Titanic. And this is what would have happened if Jack stayed on the door. She turned the corner and my mouth dropped. I love this. I love this interpretation. I didn't necessarily know that it was a Titanic. I was giving more Pirates of the Caribbean like the creatures in Pirates of the Caribbean but I love that she went in a different direction she went a little bit spooky and a, and a little bit weird and I love that because I was expecting the, a lot of people to go in like La Grande Dame's version so this really felt off the wall and very well thought through on top of it it is so well made the match from her face to her body is impeccable she's got all of the encrusted diamonds everywhere there's a lot of details from the headpiece down to the skirt it is really feeling like a character choice is it a little bit costumey yeah it is a little bit costumey do i care absolutely not this is so well done and honestly we're drag queens you could be a little bit costumey have fun with it we're not trying to be runway models. We're not all trying to be La Grande Dame. All in all, this is so well thought through, so well made, and such an original direction, and it is definitely gonna be a fab from me. Next up, it's Gothy Kendall, and Gothy Kendall is coming out in this nude bodysuit with clamshell bra detailing, blonde hair, and uh, flowy fabric. She said she is giving you the birth of Venus. First up, I will say that Gothic Kendall looks super beautiful. I love this hair, it's super intricate, and this bodysuit hugs her body and gives her such a beautiful shape. I also like that Gothic Kendall decided to go with the birth of Venus. I think this is a very original take on the cruising theme and not one that anybody else has done because it seems like people went either Jean-Paul Gaultier Sailor or Pirate and she went neither. And that shows how well she's thinking. The only problem is, is that I feel like this is very simple. We've seen uh, the birth of Venus interpreted in a lot of ways, not necessarily on Drag Race, but just in pop culture in general. My mind immediately goes to Lady Gaga, and this just feels like not at the same level as we've seen it. Yes, the garment is really well made, and I'm sure a talented designer had put this together, but it's missing that va 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 boom aspect that we need from the runway. We get that from the hair, I just wish it was brought down. I think this would have really benefited from some additional styling and some additional stones. A person I think that her clamshell bra should have been fully encrusted to give you a little bit of that shimmer, a little bit of that pop on the runway. I also think that she should have put some fishnet stockings on to really give you that cage effect and also had some rhinestones on that. I think her shoe also could have done with some bedazzling, maybe some clamshells or a little starfish or something just to give you that little oomph that we needed. Ultimately, it's just not enough to really compare to all the other queens on the runway, and that's sort of the problem. We really need her to step up her and this is not it. It definitely feels like this is Gothi's first time on Drag Race, even though we're on basically an all-stars edition. All in all, it's just not enough, and that is why it's gonna have to be a drab. <laughs>
Next up is Hanaconda, and Hanaconda is coming out in this Victorian inspired lace garment. She's paired it with this parasol, and she said that she is the Victorian woman going cr on her cruise for the very first time. It is definitely giving you that Titanic vibes, similar to Scarlet Envy, and I thought that was an, an interesting take because. When she said cruising, this was not the look that I was thinking at all. I actually think this is a little bit of a stretch for the theme, but you know, when you're on All Stars, you definitely want to stand out. I personally do not think she followed the theme. I think it definitely needed a lot more of that nautical uh, presence put into it. This feels more historical than nautical. That being said, she looks great. And I always say, if you're not going to follow a theme, you better look good doing it. And look good, she does. Her makeup is beautiful. This color on her is great. She's got a lot of this lace, but with this sexiness underneath with this bodysuit. So her, all of it starts to peekaboo through. And it's definitely giving you a little bit of that extra moment. All in all, I think this is okay. I wish she followed the theme a little bit more and then she probably would have got a little bit of higher rating, but for what it is, I think it's pretty good and it's gonna be a soft. Ah. Next up, it's Tia Coffee, and Tia Coffee is coming out in this black latex attire with these black tentacles coming off of her. She's paired it with these graphic eyeliner and this blonde hair. She said that she is giving you the Kraken coming from the ocean. First, I will say that she, I love that she went in this direction with this Kraken vibe, this little bit of a creature. I think this is such an original take and super well thought through. I also like that these tentacles are a lot more detailed and have some movement to them. This is where I feel like Theresa May could have gotten some benefits because you definitely have more of a play. They don't feel so flat. That being said, this feels very flat. If it wasn't for the tentacles, it would just be a black latex bodysuit. Although I love her idea, I just feel like she didn't go far enough. I like this theme and I love the black latex, but I wish she would have had black gloves. I wish she would have had like black hair and I wish she would have painted her whole face black to really give you that like real creature. Right now, I feel like she's still trying to be pretty in this what could be edgy vibe. It's a little teeter-totter and it's not a commitment either way. Had she decided she wanted to go into this sort of pretty vixen vibes, I wish she would have shown a little bit more skin, whether it be a long DV, whether it had been cutouts on the side, whether it had just been some sleeveless arms, just something to give you a little bit of uh, relief from the eye because she is so covered up but yet she's got little pieces here and there that aren't. It just feels like her face is not covered, her hands are not covered, but everything else is covered. It just feels like a little bit of a disposition. Either cover yourself all up or don't. Make a decision and this feels a little too in between. All in all, love the idea, but ultimately not my favorite in execution. And so for Miss Tia Coffee, I'm gonna have to go with a drab. <laughs> And the last queen up is Miss Marina Summers. Marina Summers is coming out in this silver and blue look, holding a giant anchor. And she says she is the ship. First up, you see that her breasts are actually filled with water. Her shoes are filled with water. And she's got all of like the sort of detailing of the ship's uh, edging all throughout her body. As she walks, you realize that actually her anchor is her hair and it is long as hell. I don't know how I feel about this look. First, I will say that I love this interpretation. It's super different and super unique. But until she told me she was a ship, I didn't necessarily get it. I saw the metallicness of it and it definitely gave me more space age and not necessarily ship. But once she said ship, I was like, actually, yeah, it's, it's a little bit quite obvious. What I do love about it is that there's a lot of really cool, unique, interesting moments. Her breasts with the water in them, super cool. Her hair with the giant anchor, super cool. Her shoes with the water in it, super cool. I think that Marina suffers a little bit from being too good on the previous episodes, so I wasn't as wowed this time. First off, not only did she do one, but she did three nautical inspired looks on the ball look, and I think all three of those looks were pretty much better than this one. Uh, and this one felt a little bit 
try hard. A little bit costumey. Marina usually is the perfect balance of giving you costume and concept but still making it fashion. And this one definitely leaned a little bit more into the costume territory. All that being said, I do think she looks fierce. I do like her ideas. I do like her concepts. And the more I stare at this outfit, the more I like it. I think that just in comparison to everyone else, it's kind of middle of the road. And I've come to learn that Marina Summers is usually more top of the road. That being said, she still looks good. She still looks excellent. And it does inspire me to think of new ways of doing drag. So all in all, despite all my critiques, I am still gonna go ahead and give her a bow. And that is it for this week's runway. I kind of love this theme. I think this is a really interesting theme. It's not one that we saw. I was kind of afraid that it was gonna be a little bit samey, but I love how different people took different interpretations of it and gave you a nice variety overall. I'd like to see some version of this be brought back to another season of Drag Race and see what other people would come up with. I think there's a lot more fruitful ideas that can come out of it. Well, enough about that. Let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to Aww. Tia Coffee. I know, I think a lot of people were expecting me to say gothy, but ultimately I feel like gothy's outfit was better made and definitely fit gothy's aesthetic. So even though I felt like it definitely needed to be elevated, I felt like Tia's was just too far a departure and not what we've come to know from Tia at this new 2.0 elevated version. I think it really could have been pushed a lot further. But enough about the negative, let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week this week, I'm gonna give it to you. Scarlet Envy. I love this. I feel like this is fashion. I think this is concept. This is a look. It looks very expensive, very put together. And I think this that Scarlet definitely needed that after last week's runway. All in all, I love this look and I love the way she thinks about it. Okay, y'all, that is it for this week's episode. Do you agree or disagree with my thoughts? Well, let me know in the comments down below because I do read all of them and I try to reply to some of them. And while you're there, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I am trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of this series and I'm getting very, very, very close. Once again, my name is Neon Noir, at Miss Neon Noir on all social platforms, and I'll see you in my next episode. Bye-bye.